Hey there, David Gordon from Theater Mania here. It's Friday, October 16th. I'm here with one of the Broadway and Cabaret greats, Miss Karen Mason. Uh, we are discussing uh, a cabaret show that you did at Don't Tell Mama that is running online this weekend. Right. It's called, it's called Mason and Mamas in March. <laughs> yes. Uh, it was not filmed this past March. It was filmed a couple Marches ago. Is that right? Right, yeah, in 2015. Uh -huh. um, I uh, I opened the, the the cabaret Don't Tell Mama back in 1982, and I know, yeah, and you know, did the did the club quite a few times, but over the years, just as most club performers do, you know, you go and do the other clubs. You go, you get hired in different places, and I was looking for a um, a club to do a long run, and someone suggested to me. Uh, going back to Don't Tell Mama. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sidney Meyer offered me six weeks of Sundays and Mondays. And our first night we had a uh, a blizzard. <laughs> so not too many people showed up, but uh, you know, the, the craziness of, of March. But um, from that point on, we sold out the entire run and had such a great time. Uh, it was it was really exciting to be back in Don't Tell Mamas, uh, having known all the history that I, yeah. I know about the the place. Yeah. What? Um, tell me about how this concert came to be uh, five years ago. Well, you know, uh, it um, as I said, we were looking for a place to do a long run, and yeah. and then when you're, if you're when you're going back to a place that you have a history with. What we did was we did a, um, uh, we started out with songs that I actually opened my show with 43 uh -huh. years ago. Well, 43 in 2015, quite a few more now. <laughs> and <laughs> so uh, we did a couple of those opening numbers, one arrangement that um, was done particularly for that opening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the crazy thing about that opening was that Everybody was so, it was so exciting. At that yeah. time, opening a new cabaret was thrilling and the yeah. place was, you know, sparkly and everybody was in tuxes and long gowns. And it was just exciting to be there, exciting to be there. We had celebrities in the audience. Um, and uh, then what we did with the show, which I really loved, and this was with my director, Barry Kleinbord, and my music director, Christopher Denny. And what we decided to do was um, uh, really throughout the years, what's happened in those 43 yeah. years. And so, and a lot to add. So, you know, we did some music that we just loved, like one, one arrangement that the first time I started working with Chris in 91, Mm -hmm. that an arrangement that he really loved of, you know, at that we did together that first night working together and then did some of my Broadway stuff. We did as if we never said goodbye, um, a beautiful arrangement of, uh, uh, being alive and, um, Oh, uh, Oh shoot. It's a Beatles song. Help and being yeah. alive <laughs> and uh, <laughs> help, help. Yeah, and and, and, a, and a couple of original tunes, one by my director Brian, uh, my director Barry Kleinbord, and my husband mm -hmm. Paul Rolnick, who wrote a song called uh, "It's About Time," which was the title cut of my last CD. Yeah, but it's also a song about. Uh, it, it's really, as the Chicago Tribune said, it really should be the anthem for marriage equality. It's a beautiful song that he wrote. And we just, you know, we ended with um, Over the Rainbow and, and another Beatles tune after that. It was just a celebration, but also so many people who were there around that time in the 80s and the 90s, you know, were able to um, not relive it, but get a little nostalgic about it. And And, you know, we didn't shy away from talking about uh, the difficulties during that time and, yeah. and you know, all the good and the bad things, you know, that continue to happen. 
is returning to these places like is coming back to Don't Tell Mama when you perform there like uh, Norma Desmond does if we never say goodbye, Mom. Like, do you, like, is that, is, is that like what it is? I'm not quite so, it's quite so dramatic. Sure. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> to my people in the dark. Right. Um, actually, it was kind of funny to do um, As If We Never Said Goodbye, which is coming back to Paramount, the yeah. song that she sings. And, and it really, it wasn't ex quite as dramatic as her turn of going back to Paramount, but there was an awful lot of nostalgia about it and, and pressure, you know, listen, sure. it was a long time since I opened that club and a lot has happened and a lot of people are no longer here. Yeah. A lot of people, uh, you know, have moved to different areas and it was, I wanted it to be a very, um, I wanted it to be one of the best shows that we had put together up to that point. And I, I, I do believe that it's, it's a fantastic show. We, we had our first showing last night and um, it went really well. So I'm, I'm excited for people to see it because what's good about it is there's a live audience. Yeah. So you get to see that dynamic between an audience and, uh, and a performer. How did you decide to put it online? Why did we decide to put yeah. it on live? Yeah. Well, yeah, what happened was when the whole pandemic hit and we were all quarantined at home, uh -huh. you know, after the first three weeks of being numb um, and watching every Netflix and, and Hulu <laughs> and everything I possibly could, Amazon Prime, I, um, my videographer, actually the filmographer, I guess, mm -hmm. the gentleman who filmed it for me, his name is Michael Lee Stever, was going through some of his stuff. You know, we were all going through that period where we were cleaning out closets and going yeah. through all kinds of stuff. And he found it again and reminded me about the show. And I watched it. And, you know, that's the beauty of a little bit of time afterwards. Yeah. You get a chance to, st oh, hey, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. That was a lot better than I remembered it. And so he worked on the colorizing and making it look beautiful. And my husband, Paul Rolnick, worked on the audio portion. So he got rid of the excessive amounts of ice clinking and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. The cappuccino machine in the background. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Always very perfectly timed in the middle of a beautiful ballad. Yeah. But he got rid of most of that. I mean, it doesn't feel like you're in a vacuum. That's the, that's his genius. Yeah. But um, so we looked at it and said, you know, I, I'm so proud of this. What can we do with it? And we just decided to do um, some streaming of it you know i i started to do my little shows every thursday right oh maybe i i think like i'm not sure if it's as many as 20 weeks ago but it feels like quite a few weeks ago and i started doing my little shows on thursday and so it just felt like a natural extension of that you know to try to keep a, a connection to yeah. try to to try to uh keep myself out there and keep myself um, vital in, in, you know, yeah. my, my art. Yeah. Uh, you have a role in one of my very great theatrical memories, which was Mamma Mia, of course. Oh. Uh, and I was a, I wasn't a kid. I was like 13 or 14 and I grew up in New York city. Wow. And I remember my parents really wanted to see it and it was right after nine 11 and it was completely mm -hmm. sold out and everything. And that's back when, uh, it literally first opened and my dad was like, you know, we're going to, let's go try to do standing room for it. So we went like Thanksgiving weekend. We did standing room for Mamma Mia. Oh my was, gosh. Like, the perfect balm after nine 11. Yeah. Well, uh, that was the beauty of that show. Yeah. And I love that your parents took you to the theater and stood. Oh, yeah. I love that. My parents would take us to the theater when I was growing up. We, we grew up in the Midwest and so they would take us all the time to the Muni Opera and, yeah. you know, it's, it's, uh, the arts are so important to, to every age. Yeah. And, um, especially at that time when, you know, right after nine 11, it was always astounding to me 
how um, it was that little sanctuary yeah. uh, for that two and a half hours that you could escape what was happening outside of New York. It's unfortunately we don't have that kind of live theater experience right now to kind of escape what's going on I know. outside. And it's funny, I think about that memory a lot in thinking about like what's going to be the Mamma Mia when theater comes back now. Mm. I'm not sure, and I don't know. I feel like Mamma Mia should come back and do it again. Well, I, well, listen, whatever comes back, I hope I'm in it. So, yeah. <laughs> was that show as fun to do as it looked, or was that show like a beast by the time you were done with an eight show week? Um, yes and no. It was <laughs> uh, a great fun to do. Um, there was nothing as energizing as that mega mix at the very sure. end. Um, and listen, you know, any show with five five people, six people over the age of 40 who have on spandex, <laughs> you know, is going to be a fun time. Um, it, it was a bear, you know, it was yeah. a lot of, on the, the, the rake, you know. Oh, the, I, I keep forgetting how raked that stage was. Yeah, it was raked. And, you know, it was that's hard on your hips and hard on your feet and hard on your, you know, everything. Yeah. And um, so that was the, the maintenance part of that show was tough. But I, I, I mean, great music, great yeah. music and a f great cast. And uh, listen, I feel very, very lucky that right after 9-11, I had something like that to focus on that yeah. was so joyful. I was going to say, did it feel the same way for the actors that it felt like for the audience, for the people going to see it about that aspect? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I was so proud of Broadway that so many Broadway shows open and, and you know, open their doors to people that actors were really getting back. And honestly, it was as therapeutic for us as it was for the audience because we were doing what we were born to do. You yeah. Know? And, and that, that it just is a, a, a gift when you get a chance to do that. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to yeah. thank you for that. Hey, my pleasure. Uh, and thank you so much for your time. Uh, Mason at Mamas and March is streaming this weekend. Yes. Uh, it's, through, it's through Sunday or Monday? Saturday at 2 uh -huh. Eastern and Sunday at 3. And on, and on your website. Yeah, you can find information on how to buy tickets at www.karenmason.com. It's very easy. Although <laughs> quite a few friends of mine who are a little older, you know, it's a new world, Golda. You know, we're having to do things that we never thought we would have to do. Yeah. Karen, be well. Thank you for your time. Thank you, David, so Bye. much. Bye, you David. take care. You too. Be well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.